Welcome back to Switch to Linux. It is Monday and it's time for another Linux Top 5. We are talking today about the Top 5 Linux Web Design Packages. Some people have asked me about this and I actually thought I had done one of these and I looked back through my archive and I'm like, oh, I didn't. So we're going to go ahead and talk about this. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about where uh, I'm coming from with this, uh, with this list here. And uh, that is that I am not a programmer. This is something a lot of people have a hard time with. Like, you mentioned the word computers or web design, and automatically everybody and not, not in the know is like, you must be a computer god and can do everything. And that's not the reality. Um, I have a strong aptitude for programming. Uh, but I am completely unskilled in it because I'm completely unpracticed in it because I don't have time to do it and I really don't do a lot with it. And a lot of the reason was, back when I had the opportunity to go down that avenue, programming compilers cost thousands of dollars. I didn't have thousands of dollars, it wasn't worth wasting my time. And now, of course, everything's free and open source. I would love to take the time and get right back into that, and I'm sure I could do some awesome programming because I've always had a strong aptitude for it. Um, but I'm not a programmer. And so you might see an absence of hefty programming related stuff. It's not I'm a noob. It's that I am a front end UI UX compatibility compliant cross browser web designer. So what that means in layman's terms is if you are a guy that builds a web application, but you have no idea how to make a user interface, I'm the guy who can make your user interface gorgeous while interfacing with your program right. Um, so I do a lot with style sheets, a lot with CSS, I do a lot with Bootstrap, and particularly the only area I'm a, I'm a heavily, heavily skilled developer is in the field of WordPress. I am a very, very knowledgeable WordPress guy. And I build most of my WordPress themes from a customized Bootstrap core. So um, that's kind of where I come from with web design. So. Also, I'm talking a lot about how I conduct my web design work. Not necessarily just building a project, but actually working and interfacing and interacting with people. So that is where I'm going to come from with my approach on this particular top five. Number one is Bluefish Editor. There are a lot of different editors out there to do HTML, CSS, even programming, etc., etc., etc. The one I prefer is Bluefish. It has nearly everything in it that I want. There is one tiny little thing I'd like to see integrated, and that is on Dreamweaver, which is what I use on a Windows platform. Uh, Dreamweaver has a split screen where I can do is what you see editor on one side and code on the other. And what that's handy for is if I'm particularly editing a site, I can go in, find this, find the spot in the site. If I highlight it over here, it highlights in the code. I search less on the page. Outside of that, Bluefish Editor has absolutely everything that I am looking for. So here is their website. Uh, you can come over here. Um, you can get uh, you know get some more information about about Bluefish Editor. Um, I'm not going to dive into this quite a bit here, but here is the program itself. Um, so in Bluefish Editor, uh, you basically have a series of tools at the top panel. Uh, you can come down here and just you know start doing your your code. I'm sorry I didn't port over a website. I originally actually did this video on the other computer, but when I ported my settings over. I never change any of the video input settings, and the video production computer is ever so slightly better than my basic web design computer, and so the video is completely useless. So over there, I could pull in a full HTML page. I could show you what a one such page looked like and how this worked. What I really like about it, though, is I can do, um, I can do, there's a lot of code edits. There's a lot of things like I can drop in an HTML comment there. Actually, down here, there's a lot more that I can do. Uh, as far as uh, dropping things in, so there's you know paired tags. I can basically look for uh, a series of type things. A lot of lot of neat functionality. You know, it's how I can drop an ID or a class. Just so many things you can do inside of this. Um, we also have I'm not sure what that one is. I've never used that one. Our file structure over here, so I can quickly spot where you know. Here's my directory over here. Here's the actual files inside the directory. 
so I can kind of go back and forth and and get um, get all the things. Like I said, this is my web my uh, video production computer. Lots of images, just not a whole lot of websites on this. Um, but this editor tool is just fabulous. I probably need to do a few more videos on the, how I might use this because you know the the code completion is great and you highlight one part of it and it's going to highlight the whole rest of the tag. I guess I can show you with the comment here. You know, if this is somewhere in between and there's a lot of other bleh code in between here and I highlight any given tag, then I can actually, it'll highlight the start, highlight the end so you can very quickly spot everything that's in between. And you can customize all these colors to your basic liking. These are red. Some people may not be able to see that red if you're colorblind. So um, you can customize all of those various colors. So Bluefish Editor is just a fabulous editor. So if you do anything with, with web design, uh, Bluefish Editor is the way to go. And it's been in nearly every repository I've ever seen. Number two is FileZilla. So with FileZilla is a FTP client. There are a few of these, um, including just some basic terminal commands you can run to do this type of stuff. And there's just a variety of different tools out there for this. FileZilla is the one that I prefer. It's cross-platform, it's easy to use, nice graphical interface. And uh, if you're building a server, you can put a FileZilla, uh, FileZilla server on any system as well. Um, although I tend to use different ones when I'm building a server from scratch. But with FileZilla, here is their website. And uh, you can come over here, get more information about the latest releases. Um, it's it's a, a you know very active system. You can see here just a couple weeks ago they released another one. You can see there's the client, there's the server. Uh, the server, I'm, I think I misspoke earlier. I think Windows only for the, for the FileZilla server. When, when I've built servers on Windows platforms, that's the one I use. But usually I'm building things on, on a Linux server, obviously. So, you know, I, that's why I use, um, uh, you know, some of the other ones that are available. But the client is all platforms. Um, I run this on my Windows computers. I run this on my Mac. I run this on my Linux computers. And with this, you just uh, basically get a, you know, a, a cross-system explorer uh, set up. And then what you get with that is the ability to enter information and then you can access the server on on any uh, on any given given device there so here it is uh, I just installed this like I said I want to do this on the web design computer because all the software is there but uh, anyway I can show you a little bit more about this without um, uh, without actually having to um, uh, show you what any of the sites I'm working on so basically you get two file explorer systems the one here on the left is the directory and the files for that directory on your local machine the one on the right is the remote site directory and the files for it up at the top you can do a quick so you can either do usually like an FTP dot you know whatever the website is dot com or you can do a, a um, you know, a, a host way, an IP address. Either one of these works as long as you have an FTP. Enter the username, enter the password. Default is port 21. If port 21 is your port, you don't have to do anything. Port 22 uh, gets you um, uh, a, a secure protocol. And then most services that are good will actually change the port from the default so that, um, you know, it's just a way to, to minimize, you know, bod, bugs and bots probing servers looking for weaknesses. Uh, so you can customize the port as well. Um, up here we have a file manager or a site manager. So you can come in here, enter a new site. You can enter in the host, the port, and then choose the protocol, whether you want to do FTP or SFTP, which is actually SS, uh, SSH protocol. And then you can choose your encryption type. Um, you know, there's just plain or whatever else. And then you can choose your your login type. So there's normal. Like for me, um, you know, I just got to keep the computers encrypted because I am not entering passwords for every site I have to have TP into any given day. So I save the passwords. You also have the ask for password, which is better if you're just doing one or two little things. Uh, asking for password is the better way to go. So there's a, a variety of different ways that you can do your, your logins. And you can save a whole lot in here and just come in, in and, uh, and adjust them. A lot of different um, other settings in here that you might need to need to use as you're um, as you're going through things here. So that is FileZilla. Number three, we have GIMP. I know GIMP is on every list that I do, and there's a reason. It's so versatile of an application. Um, so GIMP, the the major advantage with this one is that. Um, 
uh, is just as good as Photoshop. Uh, you just have to learn how to use it. Uh, really, there's a few things that Photoshop does better. There's a few things GIMP does better than Photoshop. Uh, but regardless, GIMP is a is a, uh, a absolutely required tool for any web design work because you invariably have to edit images. You know, your clients are going to get you images that are snapped right from their phone or right from their camera. They're going to be like 300. Uh, by 300 resolution and and 3,000 to 10,000 pixels in size and it's gonna be crazy and you've got to open these up in GIMP you got to crop them to the right size you got to drop them to the right resolution you got to put them to the right size that you need you just need to use GIMP now of course I talk about GIMP a lot but regardless here is their site um, you know GIMP is itself a very good application um, and uh, you know, hey, here's a, here's a few other items they're they're recommending. I'm not using these because these aren't quite as commonly used in um, uh, in web design. But you can come over here and do GIMP. Uh, we're not going to dive in and show you the interface of GIMP because I have an entire tutorial series on that, and I'm just going to go ahead and link that from here. Number four, you need some form of text editor. Now I put two different things in here, and I use these in two different ways. Number one is you need LibreOffice, which is going to allow you to send clients, you know, documents back and forth. Of course, if you are constantly emailing those people on Windows, um, uh, who have Word, um, if you happen to be, you know, sending files back and forth, you are going to want to edit your uh, LibreOffice to default save things as DocX, and you also want to install the Microsoft Office fonts. In reality, I've never had any problem with the two file formats talking to each other back and forth, the two programs talking to each other back and forth but you as the free free and open source guy you got to be a little bit more lenient to the guy who's crippled behind the proprietary codes so make sure you change your settings inside your library office to your docx files and install those microsoft fonts because that's what your uh, the people you're sending documents to will be expecting. So, you know, do those little things. Um, if you're just saving documents or editing stuff in internally, you know, that's cool as well. Uh, you can just kind of leave it as it is. The other one I have on here is a text editor. And the reason I have the text editor on here is that uh, with your text editor, you will oftentimes need to, you know, bounce things onto an extended clipboard. I use text editors to keep track of all of the H uh, hexadecimal uh, color codes I'm using to spread throughout my style sheets just so I can maintain some consistency. I'll also use those with some other web tools to figure out the best color palettes to use with different schemings if I need to do that. Uh, and then of course saving passwords, database users and names as I'm transferring and migrating sites back and forth. I'll use uh, just basic text editors for that kind of stuff just as I'm going back and forth on various things. So let's go ahead and have a look at your LibreOffice uh, website here. Um, so of course we uh, most of us here are um, uh, are in, uh, familiar with LibreOffice, and on the website here you can get a lot more information about it. It's a great uh, great group, great uh, application. Again, when I'm doing stuff, I mean, if I have the option, actually, I like LibreOffice a whole lot more than I like uh, Word and and the rest of the Microsoft Office applications these days. I really do. Um, in fact, I wrote my last book entirely on LibreOffice, and I did you know as all the production on Linux software. Uh, but regardless, LibreOffice is an excellent application and then for your text editor I just use you know whatever's on the distro uh, if I don't really get super hung up on those so I got you know Kate on my KDE's I got whatever the text editor is on on Linux Mint here uh, for that so those are kinda of what I like to use on uh, on these tools here as well and number five, we need to have web browsers because web browsers are what people are going to be looking for on the web. Now, as a web developer, you are going to want to install a whole lot more browsers than anyone else who just has one that says preference. Um, and the reason is different browsers have different engines. So like um, Safari and Chrome are essentially the same thing with a different theme uh, from the, the, the mainstream operating system. And uh, Firefox is actually built on a different code base. And so you have to understand how this works. And then IE and Internet Explorer, they're just on left field somewhere else. But you have to know how they all work. Uh, so that you can uh, realize things. Internet Explorer, its only saving grace is it is the only browser that actually supports if statements. So you can literally drop 
uh, conditional things. It was brilliance on part of the coders because they knew their browser sucked. <laughs> okay, uh, but everything else tends to work pretty well with each other. Uh, Edge seems to work a little bit better than than um, you know the old Internet Explorer did for sure. Uh, but generally, what I like to do is I use Firefox as the base. I do build everything out for that, and then I do my QA across Chrome, Chromium, Edge, and Safari, whatever else, as I need to do that. However, um, with the uh, you know with uh, the browsers are getting better and better, so QA is becoming a smaller and smaller issue. But man, I was a I was a, a quality control uh, browser compatibility guy back when it was still a nightmare to do that job. <laughs> That's a lot better now. Uh, here's the my preferred browser is still Firefox. Um, I'm still I'm I'm in a conundrum. I'm in a conundrum. I will tell you, I'm in a conundrum, and the reason is. Um, on Firefox, the reason I still use the older Firefox on my development computers is Firefox uh, and most uh, most of your browsers now will have built-in developer tools. So if you push the F12 key, you'll get your developer tools. And these are actually starting to get a little bit better. I'm going to want to play around with this on Firefox Quantum, but it's been my experience that the uh, developer tools on Firefox are traditionally not very good. Um, they look like they're getting better. In fact, this is the first time I've looked at them in, in about, I don't know, a, a couple of weeks anyway. Um, looks like they're kind of getting better on uh, Quantum, but I'm going to want to have a look at it. I still like the old legacy Firebug, and I use an older version of it that's not you know crippled because it, the latest versions, they literally crippled it to say, use the Firefox one instead, and that was the time when the Firefox developer tools kind of sucked. Um, this does definitely look like it's getting better, so I'll be uh, curious to play with this a little bit more. Uh, but regardless, all of your browsers will have your developer tools. You want to have a good browser experience, and you want to kind of stick with one main one so you're used to how it works. But at the same time, you have to, as a web designer, uh, branch out and look at things in different browsers just to make sure that everything is working as, uh, as it should be. So those are my top five picks for Linux web design packages to help your web design stuff go well. If you like this video and you'd like to help support what we are doing, you can check out switchtolinux.com forward slash support uh, to see about the current ways that you can support us. You can also check the description down below for uh, most of our means to support us down there. So thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.